In this video, you'll learn how to connect your DJI Neo 2 to your FPV controller, your goggles, and your RCN3 to make this drone one of the most versatile out there on the market. But that's not the only thing that you're going to learn. You're also going to learn the best rates to use depending where you are on your FPV journey. Let's freaking go. I never intended when I started this channel to do daily uploads of long format videos, but for some reason and somehow I've sort of fallen into the rhythm of doing daily uploads. Now, unfortunately today the weather is really bad. I'm not feeling particularly brilliant myself. So I figured what can we do to do a daily video to provide value to you guys, but also a little bit of entertainment along the way and to, you know, keep that daily upload streak going. And well, today I've received a tranny. And for anybody who's been on my Discord, you will we'll have all known that I've been complaining like crazy that First of all, yes, my fault. I didn't order a tranny with my Neo 2. But then I ordered one from DJ Hasselblad, which said it was in stock. And then I got a notification saying it wasn't in stock. And that it won't be restocked until mid to late December. So I ordered one from China with a seven-day delivery to be told they don't have stock either. So we had to freestyle it. And we had to uh, borrow one from a retailer. <clears throat> we won't talk about that too much. So we are back and we have... The tranny on the back of our DJI Neo 2. And one of the questions I got asked midweek was, can you do a tutorial how we can change our rates for the Neo? And I thought, well, yeah, absolutely I can, especially now I've got a tranny, whereas before I couldn't because I didn't. So let's freaking go. But before we do, I just want to weigh this because I'm not sure the reason why they haven't included it because I've got to be honest although it does screw on at the back and you've got four holes and it screws in it's probably not going to fall off mid-flight although I will give it a good go um, the concern is obviously you're going to potentially damage these in a crash which could then potentially damage the whole slot so I'm a bit confused as to why they've made it an additional part when the original it was included now we can all say yes it's because obviously they wanted to make more money but the conversations that i've been having with a few dji people is they've not made anywhere near enough of them to cover for the demand so it can't just be a cash grab because if it was just a cash grab they'd all be ready and available so i don't know is is the simple answer it may be a weight reason and that's why i've got the scales out but it's probably a regulatory reason let's be fair so let's just move the camera over here turn the scales on okay so let's uh, with the tranny and the battery and all the prop guards weigh it and it comes in at 161 grams so at least we know that the issue and the reason for demanding an extra part isn't weight related so it must be regulatory reasons there must be reasons why they can't sell it with all these bands included and you have to buy it separately but um that's just a guess i don't know it, it could well be that it was an attempted cash grab and they just didn't get the manufacturing right i don't know but it's frustrating and i think we can all agree it is if you go out and you buy yourself a new toy whatever uh only to find out that a different part is required that's frustrating of course it is but then to find out that the different part that's required isn't actually in stock and won't be in stock for a while my biggest problem with it is okay i'm an idiot that's fine i should have known better uh, and that's fine but imagine if you're a newbie and you go out and you you buy a neo 2 and you think actually this is really good i want to get into fpv and you realize then you've got to buy an extra part as well as the goggles and the controller you buy the goggles and the controller but then you've got to wait another six weeks to get the part you need to make it all work. I think it's just really, really poor from DJI's this. However, it's not all negative because I think the product that they've got here is actually really, really good. So then, without further ado, let's, uh, let's do this. So for the FPV side of things, and we'll show you how to connect the non-FPV stuff as well. But for the FPV side of things, let's just put that there. Let's power it on. You are also going to need an FPV3 controller from DJI. Not to be confused with the FPV2 controller, which looks absolutely identical. I'm going to stick that over there. You 
you will also need a set of DJI goggles as well. Now, I'm not going to leave these on the desk purely because of space, but what I am going to do is I'm just going to plug my phone in and screen record my phone from the goggles so you can see what we're doing. Now, if you can see on the front of the screen here, it does say in RC control mode. So we know that we're in the right mode for us to do what we want to do. So let's just start recording here. Okay. So you can see the screen now. And if I push on the up button, so the, the directional joystick, if you just push it up, this will bring up this little menu and this is where we're going to change it. This is how it was set. It was set to auto. We're going to change it to manual and you'll see on the left hand side as well here. That is the difference between your pictures and your videos. But we want it in video mode because that's what we're going to sort out first of all. So we want it to be 100 ISO. We want our shutter speed to be 1 over 1 20th. Now bear in mind obviously in a dark studio, well it's not a dark studio, but in a studio like this with directional lighting faced at me and not the actual camera. In fact, I can probably... Yeah. We want the white balance to be 5,600. Aspect ratio is personal preference and I've has been asked this a few times now. Do I fly in 4x3 or do I fly in 16x9? I personally fly in 16x9. I find it more immersive and easier to fly in, whereas I know other people are the opposite. I will leave rock steady on because it's harder to do gyro flow in 16.9. And that's it. It doesn't record in log format by the looks of it. So that's the first thing that we're going to do. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to adjust our rates. If we push the joystick in, it brings up this little menu on the left hand side. Now I've got to remember how to do this because it's been a while, but I think it's going to be in control and remote control. And then what we need to do is we need to go to bottom customization. And custom mode, we need to change that to manual mode. And then I think, yeah. So the other thing we need to do is turn off attitude limit because that'll still keep you from going into full manual mode, if you like. Then the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at what our rates are. So these rates are actually lower than beta flight default rates that we looked at just at the weekend. And that makes a lot of sense because this is going to be aimed at people who are brand new to the hobby. But rates of 220, 450 and 0.56 are a little bit um, pedestrian. It's probably the most polite way of putting that. And people will fly those rates and think, God, the Neo 2's crap. It doesn't fly very well at all. And that was the initial problem with the Neo and the Avato when they first came out. People didn't realise to change them. And then they didn't change them. And because of that, they thought, oh, this is a bit rubbish, isn't it? The reality of the matter is you just need to know what to do. Now, I'm not saying that this is going to fly like a 5-inch because it absolutely won't. But we can make it fly a hell of a lot better than your out-of-the-box experience. So, center sensitivity, let's knock that down all the way. I think the lowest on DJI is 20. Yep. So, we'll knock that down to 20 on all of them. Okay, so, if you are somebody who flies tiny whoops and you want to get into this because it's a little bit bigger a little bit better then my advice to you would be to up your rate to around about 670 to 700. so these are what i would consider to be rates for pilots who have already flown smaller craft and have an idea as to what they're doing but they're not necessarily they don't necessarily call themselves experts or pro proficient in it uh, proficient in speaking is something i'm not uh, i also advocate by the way 
to have your yaw a little bit lower because it just makes it look a little bit more cinematic. Although I was speaking to a, a guy at the weekend who did say, well, I actually have my yaw higher because I have thumbs with issues. Obviously, in that case, that's, you know, that that's fine. Again, it's like anything. It's personal preference. But this is how I would set it up for a newbie. Now, also, well, for, sorry, not a newbie, but for an intermediate pilot. Now, the other thing I would advocate here is lowering this expo. This expo is massive. If you already fly crafts and you've got a rough idea of what you're doing, you can take off, you can land and you can fly around, then these are the rates that I'm going to suggest for you. So let's just finish this up. Okay, so I'll put on the screen now, but this is essentially intermediate rates, if you like. The the ones that it comes with are standard. If you've never flown a drone before, leave them at that. If you have flown a drone before and you've got a rough idea of what you're doing, give one take a little bit, these are the rates that I would recommend for you. It'll give you a little bit of pop, it'll give you a little bit more punch, but also it's, it's still relatively controllable. You're not going to be sat there on the seat of your pants thinking, oh my God, I'm going to die any second. Please help quickly. Okay, now... If you are somebody who is more prolific, proficient in the hobby, and you've decided you're going to buy yourself a Neo 2 because you want the DJI safety features, you want the care refresh, you want the ability to take good 4K pictures and videos, as well as flying in FPV mode and selfie mode, then my advice would be to go crazy on the rates like this. Now, unfortunately, unlike in beta flight, we can't put it on a switch and have different rates. So you are going to have to change this as you move up through your skill set. The chance is I'm likely to have Boy Wonder FPV with me the first time. So I'm going to leave a little bit of Expo on. But that's what I would suggest if you are a more uh, experienced FPV pilot that's buying this for all the features that it offers, but you are not green to the hobby, but you want something that's going to kick like a bit of a Mustang, then this is what I would suggest. So the next thing you're going to want to do is calibrate your sticks. So it says center the sticks and press OK. So push the sticks to their ex full externals. Don't do this hard. Just put them into each corner, nice and gentle, but make sure that they go all the way. And make sure what you're seeing on the screen is reflective of what you're doing. Also says turn the wheel as well, which is here. So that now gives you that, that control. And we've now calibrated our controller successfully. And essentially, we are ready to go now. But because this, oh no, 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 stop, stop, stop. Because this is a tutorial video, we've only really done half of it because you can also fly it in camera drone mode as well. So let me stop all this recording and go and get my other controller and I'll be back with you in just a second. And we now have our DJI RCN3 controller and we're now going to connect that. So I'm not going to show you on the screen because it's a bit too hard, but I've, I am screen recording. So if we connect aircraft DJI Neo 2. And herein did lie the problem. We needed an update to the RCN3, but when it was trying to connect to the Neo 2, it wouldn't offer it. So the way I got it to offer it was to turn everything off, plug in the phone, unplug and replug the phone in, then turn the RCN3 on on its own. The Neo, as you can see, is off. It then offered the update, and away we go. So now, if we go through the whole process again and turn it on. It should now connect. Fem's last words. Power on, pair now. So hold the button down to make it beep. Press aircraft beeped. And we should now. There we go. So let me just grab my. Con oh gosh. Let me just grab my controller and phone. And I'll take you through some of the settings that I think that you should be looking at changing. So this, in this mode now, will fly like a camera drone. So it will fly essentially like a um, Mini or a Mavic, but with a few differences, obviously. So first of all, we're going to look at the settings. So we've got 4K, 
60, which is what we're going to shoot in because that gives us a little bit more flexibility. Again, forgive the, the lights in here. Just the way they are, you're not going to see anything if I turn it around, so you're better off just... Uh, I put the red light right behind it. No, never mind. Anyway. Change from auto to pro. And if we press that, turn off auto, put it down to 100 ISO, and then obviously it's just a case of adjusting that as we go out there and fly, but we can go and do that, not a problem. I think that, I, yeah, those are the only two settings that we can change here. If you have a vertical shooting mode, it doesn't turn the gimbal round, it literally just shoots in the middle of the frame and shows you where it's framing it and spits out a file so it makes it easier don't get me wrong but it doesn't actually turn the gimbal around so you are losing some of the uh, functionality we're going to turn it to bypass we're going to leave it on normal not nifty leave radar map on advanced return to home we're going to leave on return to home altitude uh, we'll set to about 130 depending obviously yeah update home point ar settings do we need to change any of these Show aircraft home point, show the return to home route, and aircraft shadow. Battery information should tell me how many times we've charged, cycled it once. But we've got a tranny now, so we're all good. You've got your different uh, emergency modes and stuff in there. Oh, gosh, emergency modes in there and stuff. Then we can go into control. We want it set to imperial, display, Gain and Expo Tuning. So this is what we did with the Mini 5. And we're going to have a little mess with some of these as we go out and change it. But it should... I don't know if it keeps my settings from the Mini 5. But I'm going to double check those and uh, take a look when we go out. Just to see what it's like. Stick mode. You've got button customization in here as well. Then in your camera. It tells you it takes MP4s. Colour is normal. There is no flat colour profile sadly. Um, but, I mean, for what the drone is and what it offers, yeah, app recording, use mobile device, a remote control built-in mic or external mic to record, anti-flicker set to auto, histogram on, overexposure warning on, grid lines, we'll set those on, white balance set to manual, again, I would advocate 56,000. Style, I'm going to assume we're going to have to go sharpness minus two. Uh, a noise reduction, I'm going to assume minus one, but we'll, again, we'll, we'll go out there and we'll double check it. Custom file naming, blah, blah, we don't care about that. Transmission, it is what it is, and then in here, obviously, you've got, and that is pretty much the settings. It tells you, obviously, we haven't got any satellite positionings. It tells us the battery's on 79%, and we can now fly it in camera draw mode. So we are set up now in all modes, and whilst the details of what we've got set up in camera draw mode may not be 100% perfect for when we actually go out there and fly it. We've got a starting point and that makes it so much easier once you're in the air, especially with a battery like this that doesn't last a huge amount of time. If you've got three batteries, it's not as bad, but it still takes its time. So with all that in mind, I'm going to end this video here now and then tomorrow, hopefully, we can have... Um, a few flights in each different mode looking at each different settings seeing what the difference is and then sort of putting those personal preference ones in there and showing you how they change it and how they make it look better but if you've got any questions whatsoever on the dji neo 2 then please do just drop them in the comments down below because as always i am here to help you've all been amazing peace out YouTube and I have had a chat and we believe that this is the video that you'll like the most so watch it and let me know if they're right.